Hey, welcome back. My name is Rahul, and in the next few videos, we're going to develop a full-featured Android app using the Google Maps API. One of the powerful things about mobile phones is that they're mobile. As a result, being able to integrate location and map data into whatever you're building can unlock a lot of really cool functionality. For example, the app that we're going to build. This app will allow you to keep track of important places in your life. In the process of building this app, not only will we learn how to interact with the Google Maps API, we'll also learn how to pass data back and forth between different screens in your app. In addition, we'll also learn how to save data to a file. Keep watching so we can build this together. Before we start coding, there are three things I want to talk about. One, I want to provide some background on the app and give you a demo. Second, I want to talk about the main concepts that you will and won't cover. And finally, I want to talk about how we're going to build the app and breaking it down into different milestones. The first, some background, the app that we're going to make is a clone of a really popular app made by Google called Google My Maps. The idea of this app is really similar in that you can keep track of places that matter to you. You can make custom maps to remember your favorite places, explore new cities, or plan great vacations. This app, of course, has more functionality because it has millions of downloads and a whole team working on this app. So for example, you can do things like search and navigate to places that you can't do in our app. But if you're interested, drop a comment and we can keep adding more functionality from Google My Maps into the app that we're building. In terms of what you should know before beginning this project, I'm building the app in Kotlin, so having some knowledge of programming will be valuable. Don't worry too much about the Android concepts because I'll introduce them to you as we encounter them in the app. If you are totally new to Android though, I'd recommend that you start with this playlist, which I published a few weeks ago, around building a tip calculator in Android. The tip calculator is a really great first app because it's a lot simpler compared to what we're building here. So I'll leave a link to this in, this, in the description if you're interested. Now I'll do a quick demo of the app so you can see what we're going to build. The main screen of the app shows a list of all the map titles. So here I already have five maps. I'm going to Singapore on vacation in a few weeks, and so I made one map which is about all the places I want to go in Singapore. So if I tap on that map, you can see we navigate to a map view which shows all the markers associated with this map called Singapore Travel Itinerary. I can tap on one of the markers to learn more about what I had written about it. So here's Sentosa Island. And then I can tap on another one to learn more about that. And the cool thing here is that we have all the functionality of a normal map. So I can double tap to zoom, I can zoom out, and I can pan, which just means I can move the map around. Of course, the map wouldn't be that interesting if all you could do is view an existing set of maps. We'd like the, for the user to be able to create a new map. And so you can tap on this plus button in the bottom of the screen and give provide a new map title. So I'll call this new map California regions. And you'll notice at the bottom, there's a dialogue here which says long press to add a marker. So if I tap on that, this gives us a hint of how we can add more data into this map by long pressing. So if I long press, I have a dialogue that shows up which prompts me to in enter in a title and description. The one really important thing is error handling. Whenever you're collecting data from a user, you need to make sure that that data is sanitized and it's well formatted. So if I try and create a marker, Right now, for example, you'll see that we have error handling, which says the title and description must be non-empty. I have to input some valid data here. So I can say NorCal, I can say my fave, and then I can zoom out a bit. Oops. And I'll drop one more pin in SoCal. So the two regions of California, and this is not my fave. Now, at the top right, there's an option here to save it. And as soon as I save it, you can see that we've added one more element into the recycler view, into the list, which is the new map, California regions. And if I tap on that, you can see both of the markers that I had added. Next, I'll talk about the main concepts we will and won't cover while building the app. The first, of course, we'll be talking about how to integrate map and location data into your application, because the main point of what we're building is rendering a map and showing important places on it. Second, we'll talk about how to navigate between screens in your app with data. This is important because pretty much all apps will have multiple screens and you'll need to be able to communicate between them. And we'll use Android's intent system to do that. And third, 
we'll talk about how to persist data. So even if the user closes the app, they expect that all the created maps that they have inputted into the app will still be there when they come back to it. And the way we'll do this is by saving all the map data into a file. There's also a few concepts which we're not covering, which is good because it'll make our app simpler and we can really focus on the, the core concepts. So first, we're not going to be doing anything with networking or the internet. As soon as you introduce talking to an API or a server, your app becomes a lot more complicated. And second, we're not going to be persis persisting data with the database. Generally, when you have structured data, which we, are, we do have in this app, it's recommended that you put it into a database like SQLite. However, there is some additional complexity that you have to deal with when you work with something like Room or other databases. So we're not going to be doing that in this walkthrough. Finally, I want to talk about the steps we're going to take in order to build our application. The first, we're not going to worry at all about actually rendering a map. Instead, we'll just render a list of all the map titles in the main activity. Next, once you tap on one of the map titles, we want to navigate to a different screen where we show the map along with the associated data, which are the different markers you can see. After that, we'll spend a few videos doing the creation flow. So that's the flow that you enter into when you tap on the plus button on the bottom right of the main activity. We'll also spend one video here talking about how do you save all the map data into a file so when the user comes back into the application, we can read all that data from that file that's persisted. And finally, we'll have one video dedicated to polish and animations to make our app feel a lot better. Now, you can tell looking behind me, I have a bunch of maps that are always in my room. So I had a lot of fun building out this project. I hope you do too. As you're going through it, if you get stuck anywhere, if you have any questions, let me know. I'm here to help as much as I can. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.